Hello everyone, Toby from abrandrover.com here. I quickly want to show you how you can set up looping automatically and uh, recording more layer than only one layer, but only pressing one button to record, let's say three layers. Okay, so as you know, I have this one button live looper here and this is controlling in this instance here, this is controlling four more tracks. So those tracks are audio tracks and this one is recording. If I hit record here, it's gonna record the first. It's and you can hear already. Here. Next one. Record here. It's gonna record here. It's gonna record here. Yeah, so you get the idea. So obviously um, what a lot of people don't know uh, or have understood yet, it makes sense to route MIDI directly into the looper and to control the looper via MIDI notes from a MIDI controller. So I have a MIDI controller here and just quickly want to show you how to set this up. So this um, track here where the one button live looper is sitting on is receiving directly um, from this MIDI controller Dicer, Novation Dicer here. So this is sending MIDI notes. So now I can switch on um, the different functions here and switch on the different MIDI note input function. So I do this down below here and then I press S for syncing. It's like a MIDI learn function. So if I now send in a MIDI note via pressing this MIDI controller, you can see it's automatically detecting this MIDI note here and the MIDI note pitch, meaning now it's mapped to this button here. So that's different to the native uh, MIDI map function in Ableton Live, which you can activate up here. So you could do this this way as well, but this direct MIDI note input is much cleaner from a programming and uh, background because you're sending a MIDI note straight into there and you are able to map this button um, to different things still um, and um, have different loopers being turned on or turned off and have your mappings always stored in presets as well. Okay, so let's do this real quick with another button. Maybe let's take this button down here for the delete function. So I just switch on the MIDI direct MIDI note input here, press S and now press this button and now we have those two functions being here. So I'm now going to record something and uh, due to I'm doing a screencast here, screen recording, there is uh, some really crazy audio latency. So this will sound a little funny. So let's try this. Ah, I need to start the track first, um, the transport first. Da, 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 da. And you can hear some latency is involved here because due to the screencast. Okay, so I only pressed this button up here to record the next, uh, to start and to reloop the next layer. So I can now press this button down here, which is the delete button and all the clips are getting deleted. So um, this way you are able to set this up. So now how are you able to set this up? Um, all three layers recording for one bar with um, only pressing one button. So example could be, you know you're doing this harmony, so you want actually three times one bar to be recorded. So this could be done via a MIDI dummy clip. So because we are sending now a MIDI note to hit the record and reload function, we could set this up in a MIDI dummy clip. So we now know we have this E3 here, which is triggering the record and the reload function. So let's set up a MIDI clip. We can just go to a MIDI slot, a clip slot, double click on it and now we have a MIDI click here and now we need to set the monitor to auto so that it's gonna receive um, MIDI notes from this clip because if it's too in you can see it's grayed out so MIDI notes won't be received. So we set this to auto and we used this MIDI pitch E3 here so the MIDI note of E3 is now triggering um, the recording function. So just 
to show you. So if this is set up here, for example, let's set this up on, bar, uh, on count four in this track. So this MIDI note here now will trigger the function record. So if I just start this MIDI clip here, we can see that without, <laughs> without touching anything, this clip now, this MIDI note now, is triggering the record function here. So as it's doing the record function, we could trigger it to do a reloop function as well. So let's say we want to um, loop one bar. So now at this point, loop will be triggered and as it's quantized, it will start recording here in the next bar. So if we set up another MIDI note here, it will trigger Let's set it up on the 4 maybe as well. So it needs to be E3 as well. So we could actually fold this so it makes it a bit more obvious and a bit more um, easier to watch. So we want to turn off the loop function now because we don't want to loop the commands for um, recording and relooping here. So what is happening now? So let's quickly go through this. So I play this track and now this MIDI note is triggering record and this one here is triggering reloop. So I just gonna record one loop here to make, make this obvious. So transport is running and if I now trigger this clip here, two, three, it's running and it's now recording. <laughs> It's sounding quite funny, but you get the picture. So um, it's kind of like a uh, robot which is pressing this button here for me, record and reloop at the right time because I can set this up in the MIDI clip via the MIDI note section here. So the MIDI note you can see in the clip, the E3, is actually, uh, was it this button or that button, but you, you get the picture, it's like record and reloop is doing this automatically. So this is basic for saying, hey, actually I want to record three loops now of one bar, but I don't want to press this six times. So we can set this up now in the clip here. So we have this clip and we actually just need um, six bars now. Let's zoom out a little. So if we now just duplicate those here and once more and it's actually seven bars so now the first hit or the first note will trigger the recording for the first loop layer then the second note will stop it and replay it and then this one here again will um, trigger reloop again so Unfortunately, we have now one bar here in between. <coughs> Excuse me. We have one bar in between. So this would mean we would have a break of one bar and then the next recording would start in the next or the bar after. So I actually want this to be straight after the loop. So I actually want this to happen, the recording to happen earlier. So I'm going to change those uh, triggering signals here and set those up like this and now I will be able to record straight away after um, the first bar. So let's do this again. So I just gonna start this MIDI clip now and you can see the actions. <laughs> Again, the latency is interesting because of the screencast. So you can see now with this one clip here, I could actually trigger all those things, like all those recordings one after one. So if you have a part in your um, live set where you actually want to do something like this, you quickly want to record stuff one after one, you know that you got to record a harmony like I'm doing in this case here for one bar and then the next one, the next layer should come straight after the recording. This could be all set up via a MIDI clip, a MIDI dummy clip on the 
looping track, you need to just turn on the MIDI note in pitch and um, set MIDI notes for um, the recording and the relooping. Obviously, this would work with deleting or going back or with stop as well. So you could use dummy clips on your looper track here to automate a few things if you know that those things are going to happen in your live looping set. Okay, cool. So if you haven't checked out the one button live looper, um, there is a link in the video description or you will find it on my homepage ableddrummer.com. It's a Max for Life device, which means you will need Max for Life to make use of that. Max for Life is included in Ableton Life Suite or can be bought as an add-on to Ableton Life Standard. Okay, nice one. Take care. Bye-bye.